As time goes by, the world provides us strange mysteries, phenomenons that can't be explained, events that leave people puzzled, confused, helpless to find resolution or closure. One of the most abstract and baffling of them all is Dead Rising on the Nintendo Wii. I've touched on this subject in the past, but it was just my impressions after a meager few minutes of attempting to play it. I think it deserves a thorough analysis. How come? Because I'm running out of material for this franchise. Before getting into the game, let's see if we can figure out the biggest mystery. Why it exists. Who gave this idea the thumbs up and what led them to thinking it was a rational decision? Let's see. According to my research, Capcom decided to port this game to the Wii when Resident Evil 4's port was well received and sold beyond their expectations. Now that port actually made sense since it was originally a GameCube game. The Wii is more or less a slightly better GameCube so it can manage a port without losing any elements of the original. However, Dead Rising was developed for the Xbox 360, a console that is significantly more powerful than the Wii. So it goes without saying they had to chop the original game up with a machete before making it functional on a system like this. Capcom also intended for the game to sell half a million copies. Yeah, it didn't. I've been playing the original Dead Rising game for about 11 years now. I know this game up and down, side to side, but not inside out. That's Stipo's job. Do you think I know how to find unused models and animations and beta discs? No, I'm not a fucking nerd. But the point is, I know this game and how it plays. Tons of zombos to mess with using whatever items you can find to fight, amazing detail in the area surrounding you, hectic gameplay that involves fighting psychopaths, helping idiotic survivors, blah 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 blah. You should know all this. The game is awesome. I love it with every bit of my being. But how is it on the Wii? When it launched, I completely ignored it and chose to wait another year and a half for Dead Rising 2. But you know what? It's time to really dive into this game. Let's take a look at the liberties that... Tos took into making this game possible on the Wii in the first place. If you're familiar with Dead Rising, you know the large zombie count, massive areas, and satisfying means of exploring the place. Let's see how... Tose did with Chop Till You Drop. All cutscenes are just separate video files, similar to Resident Evil 4 on PlayStation 2. This was either done to save disk space, or so they don't have to reanimate all the cutscenes just for this menial Wii version. Let's go down the rest of the changes. Controls are fucking awful when you're walking or doing melee combat. In other words, when you're doing almost anything. The Wii was obviously not capable of utilizing the MT framework engine used in the Xbox 360 version. But then, Toast found an alternate means of developing this game as the company was able to borrow the Resident Evil 4 engine. Due to this, Frank has a lot of Leon's animations, frame by frame with every single fire and reload. Every single projectile weapon is also from Resident Evil 4. This engine also brought in other elements to Dead Rising, such as separate ammunition for guns. Frank can't take pictures anymore, probably due to hardware limitations. How will I look at my low quality JPEGs of high quality zombies? A lot of special moves are also missing. No disembowel, no knee drop, no roundhouse kicks. Obviously a fault comes from the fact that you can't freely jump anymore. At the very least, they made aiming a lot easier. Helps that it's an actual Wii remote, since if you ask me, aiming with something like this is much more natural than a thumbstick especially with how awkward Frank aimed in the original title. Still, being forced to waggle and shake just to get certain moves out sometimes is kind of annoying. You have an inventory similar to the Resident Evil games, but the only things that take up space is food and guns. You can hold a single melee weapon and throw a at a time. So let's go over some uh, very key differences when it comes to this version of Dead Rising. There's no overall timer for the game, you can't throw a lot of items, despite that you can in the original version. Shoehorned and senseless money system in which zombie kills is a means of attaining this currency. Friendly fire on survivors is impossible. Huh. Is this all starting to sound familiar? With that, let's take this wonderfully crippled adventure. Well, looks like the survivors don't feel like talking. To thank you for choosing to shop with us today. The time is now 12 noon. Thank you. Shopping with you, something happens to raise my blood pressure. What do you mean every time? 
You don't even come home most nights, let alone take the shuttles. So? I work for a living. Let's work? Huh. Is that what you call that hanky-panky with that big-titted secretary now? Oh, please. What the hell does that have to do with anything? Listen to you. Every time something goes wrong, you have to raise your voice. <laughs> I never should have married you. You want to split up then? Sounds great. Oh my god, there's almost no zombos around. How did the survivors get overrun? According to the developers, the zombie count went from 800 on screen maximum to just about 100. The draw distance also seems to suffer when it comes to their models as well as their variety and appearance. One of the more annoying things about this port is how this song plays during just about every single mission in the game. Follow me! At least they don't let you leave behind survivors when exiting an area since the engine probably can't handle it. I think it also wasn't able to handle helping survivors move by carrying them or holding their hands. Even when that was the case for some of these survivors, now you just mash the callout command like it's 2006 again. The park is fucking tiny. Among the rest of the mall, this saw the most change. Look at how close the doors are now. Whoa, I feel like a fucking giant. Okay, I just wanna get over there. Let me go up here and, nope, a barricade, okay. Just quick turn here and, nope, another pile of garbage. How about over, no, another goddamn blockade. If I could just go through here, I'd be good, but Frank cannot jump on his own anymore. Fuck, I just wanna go on the other side of this. The mall itself seems a lot darker when the lights shut off too. I can barely see in front of me. Ooh, spooky. Whoa, is that a big old zombie? Damn, hey wait, that's Joe. <laughs> What's she doing here? And here, and here. Geez, apparently this mall is the number one spot for parrots and poodles. Oh, and uh, there's zombies too, I guess. What? The parrots are carrying grenades and actually have the mental capacity to drop them near you because they fucking hate you for some reason. <laughs> See, the other zombos, they all wanna eat your flesh when they get to you, but apparently when you zombify birds, they just want you dead. We seem to live in an alternate reality where the Cletus situation turns out a bit different. Frank actually saves his life and he is in his debt. Actually, Frank seems to be paying off his actual debt. Really, man? We just saved your life and you're still going to charge us for weaponry? <laughs> Where am I even gonna find money? Maybe I can smash the cash registers? Okay, sure. Wait, look, the Zombos are dropping money. Well, not like they were gonna use the cash. Here's another couple changes in the characters from the original game. Cliff is another super zombie like Joe. So is Kent. I guess since you can't use your camera where you like, they couldn't salvage a story. This also meant the introduction scene skips the photo taking portion. Oh, but they'll include the most annoying survivors that specifically needed your camera to finish it anyway. Ugh, fuck you, Toos. As for other particular characters, they just seem to be completely absent. All right, where are you, Carlito? I'll just aim up here and... What? Wait, why is he down here now? <laughs> okay, Otis. Calm down. What? You... You left out Adam's theme song? You left out his amazing fucking theme song? I will not stand for this! Hey look, the katana is still here. Damn, this guy is the master of shortcuts. He still shows you the Wonderland warp, but also somehow gets me to Cletus' shop and back in an instant. Oh my god, the convict's fight is nothing more but a series of quick time events. Holy shit, this is too stupid. He's doing moves that you never even see in the original game. Look at those soulless eyes as he's choking the life out of him. Well, that was ridiculous. 
For some reason, they also laid out items inside areas that have no business being there. Why are the lawnmowers inside Wonderland Plaza? Oh shit, you can actually blow off cultists' heads. Looks pretty bad, but still kind of jarring. Hey, didn't there used to be a window here? Alright, killed Sean. Wow, looks like there's still five survivors I can escort here. Wait, what? Oh, god damn it. So because the game apparently can't handle having you escort more than three survivors, you have to take two back first to the security room, walk all the way back to the theater, and then take the three remaining survivors and walk all the way back to the security room again. Wow, fun. The maintenance tunnels are really bizarre. You can't enter it until you get the keys to this white car, and you can only exit the white car when you reach dead ends in the tunnels. If your car breaks down while you're in them, it's an immediate death. Oh yeah, look at those sweet driving skills! Wow, the music certainly ruins this moment and any possibility for you to feel bad for Jesse. What the? She has a lot of health for some reason. Okay, there we go. The special forces are a lot more fucking annoying in this version because of how much they can make you stagger. Oh, come on. Stop hit- Fuck! I just want to kill you- Jesus! Fuck! <laughs> they couldn't- They couldn't even get zombies to surround the tank. Oh no, Brock is made out of solid adamantium. How will I ever defeat him? Hey look, here's where all the special moves went for this specific fight. Full of on-screen button prompts. Wonderful. Hey, those zombies weren't there before. Oops. Looks like they didn't want to show off the zombie count like in the original game. Okay, and that is pretty much all you'd ever have to know about Dead Rising Chop till you drop. Ultimately, this game is really boring. It is so monotonous completing missions and killing zombies since there's so little to do. Less items to use and less special abilities just makes it so easily tiresome. In a world where I never played the Xbox 360 version and just experienced this, I would definitely think much less of Dead Rising. Especially if, in that world, this was the only game. It can't even make headshots that satisfying. I mean, look at how Resident Evil 4 did headshot kills. And how about this game with the exact same engine? Kind of pathetic. But still, looking at it in the eyes of someone that experienced the original Dead Rising over and over and over and over again, I'll go ahead and say it was ambitious to attempt this with such strict limitations. While a lot of the details were very blurry, the mall itself was still very well furnished and looks good, albeit somewhat washed out. When they first started showing off this version, I assumed they would hack, or chop, off half the mall or something in order to compensate with the Wii's hardware. But no, just about everything managed to make it. Sure, the park is smaller, but it's all still there. Part of me wishes there were more examples of this. It definitely used to be more common in older generations, but it's kind of a lost art these days. When something comes to games being made for different hardware, it's only something that occurs during the early years of a new generation. And it isn't that interesting. Ooh, the one on weaker hardware has a lower resolution. Big deal. I want more extreme examples. Like this. I understand Call of Duty 4 received a Wii port two years after the original game's launch, but I doubt they tried taking liberties as ridiculous as this version of Dead Rising. This game's existence is just so strange. It's like a weird hybrid between Chinese knockoff and new installment. Keep in mind, this was almost a year before Dead Rising 2 launched. No, it's like... You ever have a dream of a place or event you're familiar with, and you're immersed in the dream, but part of you feels like everything is just slightly different? Almost to the point where it's off-putting? Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop is like a fever dream of the original game. It's terrible in so many ways, but also magical in a few. Still better than Dead Rising 4. Something was gonna happen tonight. One last note, guys. I've been wanting to say this for a while, but I felt like this video would be the most appropriate to say it. Holy shit. 
I can't believe how many new subscribers I've been getting since the beginning of July. I originally wrote this in to be so happy about reaching 2,500 subscribers, but before I knew it, I hit 3,000. Whoa. I'm so happy to receive the slews of comments on my videos too, especially my Dead Rising related videos that particularly saw a massive increase in views. To all of you newcomers, hope you guys enjoy my other content. I am very passionate about other franchises as you may notice with my Contra retrospect, and there will be more videos like these in the future. You can also catch me streaming on Combat Network three nights a week. Link and info can be found below. Thanks again, and hope you stick around.